Hello, my name is Anthony Calkins, and this is Music in Mind with Anthony Calkins. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about improvisation in my own music. So as I talked about in the last video, I've been working on a set of songs for about a year now. These songs are basically rock songs. You know, it's not really a genre that you think of when you think of improvisation. Um, but of course there's a long history of improvisation in rock music. Jimi Hendrix was a big improviser, Frank Zappa, Robert Fripp. There is plenty of improvisation in rock music, but it isn't as central to the, the creation of the music as some other types of music like jazz music or post-war avant-garde classical music and things like that. Improvisation is something that's really important to me in my own music and uh, I've worked in a lot of different improvisatory fields of music. I've studied jazz to some degree. I'm not really a jazz guitarist but I, I, you know, I, can, I can play in a jazz style and I know something about it, so if, if asked, I can sort of do it, but I don't really consider myself a jazz musician. And uh, I've also performed in uh, improvising ensembles, chamber ensembles and things like that, where it's sort of a totally free setting, where, you know, you get together and you just, you know, you play a concert of music and there's no music written ahead of time and there's no real decisions made ahead of time and it's just whoever is on stage working together to create a, sort of a novel and maybe coherent musical experience at the time. And so these fully improvised settings have been extremely fulfilling to me. They, what I really like about it is they really bring me into the present and they, they focus me in a way that um, a lot of music doesn't because what it, what it really does is it makes, it makes you aware of sort of the, the the current moment and the the aesthetic element of the the present moment and what's really great about it is you're working with the, the other musicians on stage and you're working together sort of in, in an attempt to create a, a stream of novel musical experiences that are coherent and uh, moving or not you know depending on what it is you're trying to do but it's 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 sort of fleeting because it's a, it's, a, it's a music that hasn't existed before and will probably never be played again and certainly never in exactly the same way. And so the, that kind of makes it special in and of itself. Beyond that though, there's also something that's uh, sort, of, um, sort of narcissistic or hedonistic about it because it's so focused on the, the, the aesthetic experience being created at the time and it's in a lot of ways unaware of everything that's happening around it and it's kind of trying to fight context a lot of times which is sort of interesting but also sort of naive in a sense and uh, the, this fighting of context and tradition of improvised music is something that I think about a lot because a lot of the the, the improvisers I look to in the past who I, you know, I've learned technique and musical language and stuff from are jazz improvisers from the, the 50s and 60s who were you know, very deeply embedded in a, a tradition of music and also embedded in a struggle of uh, oppression that they were feeling because a lot of them were black musicians. Um, and so there was a lot of struggle against the oppression of white America at the time, and still is. Um, and then for me, as a, a white musician improviser, it's sort of a confusing dialogue that uh, I'm engaging in when I play um, improvised forms of music. But ultimately, for me, this improvisation is important because, uh, you know, I like it. I like creating music like that. It's, it's fun and it, it's powerful for me to be that engaged in the present. And uh, I don't consider myself one of the best guitar players ever, um, but I do like the ability to explore my instrument and see what it can do, see what I can make it do uh, outside of sort of a, a traditional musical sense. And uh, Frank Zappa has a great quote about uh, improvising and he says, uh, I have a basic knowledge of the operation of the instrument and I have an imagination and when the time comes up in the song to play a solo it's me against the laws of nature and I kinda like that I like that idea of struggling against the moment and struggling against all of the physical 
uh, limitations to see just what you can pump out. So I want to show you some examples of some of the improvisation I have done, some of the things I've been working on over the last few years. The, the first one I want to show you is a group that I used to play with called Philip D. Brewster. And uh, it was a trio where we played entirely improvised music. It was Molly Jones on saxophone, Bori Shin on uh, accordion, and myself on guitar. And we would get together and we would just play. And we recorded a short album of improvised songs and we performed a couple times. And this is a video of one of our performances. The next video I want to show is a group I played with in the Netherlands a few years ago. I participated in a summer program given by um, the Dutch improvising collectives, the Instant Composers Pool and Duke, and those are collectives of musicians who improvise and create music on the spot, create all sorts of things, experiment in a lot of ways with music. And uh, they put together a summer program with musicians from all over the world, and we all got together and performed a few concerts of improvised music. So this is a video of a quartet I played on one of those concerts.
The last video I want to show you is actually from my master's recital. And this was a video of a piece that I put together that is fully improvised. And its uh, performers are me on guitar, my computer, with a program that I wrote that listens to me and does all sorts of things to the audio and then performs its own music based on live sampling and warping and all sorts of uh, crazy things it can do to the audio. Um, and then various ways it can manipulate the audio based on what I'm playing. And then also two dancers. And um, I spent time improvising with the computer and the dancers to kind of create a language among us 
where uh, a musical gesture could be displayed with dance or it could be displayed electronically and uh, a physical dance gesture could be performed on guitar or if I perform it the computer could pick up on that and so it's sort of this this feedback loop of everybody so uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a it's a way of using improvisation to communicate between multiple artistic types.
Well, thanks everybody for watching the second episode of Music in Mind. If you liked it, please subscribe or hit the like button or leave a comment. And there are links below to all of my social media and my Patreon page. If you like the content and you would like to support, I would really appreciate anything from a dollar to whatever you feel comfortable with. Thank you so much. See you next time.